Can vehicle to load really power your home? That's what I want to look at today. Most people are probably more familiar with vehicle to grid. This is where power is taken from an electric vehicle and fed directly into the grid at times of peak demand. Unfortunately, it's a standard that's only supported by Chadamo currently on Nissan's and Mitsubishi's. There's also vehicle to home, where power can be sent from an electric vehicle to the home, and it's incorporated on the new Ford F-150. Unfortunately, it does require a special bi-directional charger. With vehicle to load then, a regular charger is used to charge the car, but the car with a special adapter can send power out. How can we use it? Well, we could just run an extension cable into the house and plug things into it. But a better way is to use solar. So to understand how vehicle to load would work with the solar system, let's have a look at my original solar system which consisted of this 10 kilowatt inverter and 16 200 amp hour deep cycle gel batteries. So people are probably asking who buys lead acid batteries these days and why have I not got lithium? Well, five years ago here in Thailand, lithium was crazy expensive and you would have been crazy to have bought lithium so I started off with these 38 kilowatt hours of deep cycle gel and that served me very well so here we are and after about five years you are considering an upgrade but of course you cannot just simply add lithium batteries to a lead acid setup. So the way I've done it is I have this original system set as a standalone system and it's my backup system. In addition to that I have new inverters. I have three of these grow watt five kilowatt off-grid inverters. And I have got four nine kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. So this is my new system. In total, there is uh, 20 kilowatts of solar PV spread across the four inverters. How do I get the two systems to integrate? Well, that happens via this box here. And this is an automatic transfer switch. So basically it's a transfer switch which allows two inputs and one output. So I've got my grid connection and you can see PEA, which is the Provincial Electricity Authority, or the grid, coming into the house. But before it goes into my inverter, it goes into the transfer switch. And so before I use grid power, I use my old system. So let's just see what happens when my old batteries 
run out of power. So, when we switch off the old inverter, as would happen when the batteries ran down, the automatic transfer switch switches across to grid power. So let's turn the grid off. And let's have a look at one of these inverters. So if we drill down into the menu, you can see that I have this set up as a priority setting of solar, battery, utility, SBU. And when you look at the diagram, you can see, I just drill down a little bit. We have on this particular inverter, just over two kilowatts coming in from solar. Uh, the batteries are being charged. There's 61% on the batteries. And you can see there's nothing coming from the grid. But I could add power to co-supply the house from the grid but uh, let's just show you what happens when I do that so solar battery utilities utility solar solar utility batteries so let's select that come out And now we are drawing power from the grid but if you remember I just switched the grid off um, and the reason for that is that I wanted to show that you can have two sources of AC power coming into an inverter in my case this is the grid power but the default setup is my original solar system so if you had vehicle to load, you could have an automatic transfer switch like I've got. And you could have grid coming in, or you could have power from vehicle to load via the automatic transfer switch.